Let's jump in. Everett, can you lead us off with a really quick crash course on what is Cloud GTM? Absolutely. Yeah, I'll do my best. And we might have a little bit of bias here being Tackle, the, the cloud go marketing company, but um, we view Cloud GDM as when a software company has positioned itself to leverage cloud provider ecosystems to drive uh, revenue and kind of support new revenue strategies. And with this motion, you know, sellers are meeting their customers where their wallets are, which is increasingly with their cloud consumption commitments with the cloud providers. Um, so allowing sellers and organizations to nurture these co-sell partnerships with the cloud providers, which we see lead to more momentous um, high value sales opportunities that are typically transacted via cloud marketplace. Sweet. Thank you, Everett. So building a successful cloud GTM motion really requires enthusiasm, education, and enablement. So our goal, our goal for today is to really provide actionable tips and best practices for really creating a new mindset and enabling new behaviors to drive really consistent, repeatable adoption of these tactics in your sales org. So in the next 20 minutes, 25 minutes, we're going to cover one, how to motivate and excite your sellers to leverage Cloud GTM. Two, uh, define how what success looks like and, and share some wins and success stories from the field at Full Story and Tackle. Third, cover how you can really influence behavior and make all things Cloud GTM a habit. And then fourth, cover what role the partner team has in all of this. Uh, then if we have time, we'll wrap up with some questions. If not, we'll answer the questions offline, but uh, let's jump in. So it's a heavy list, lift to really ask sellers to consider new steps in their strategy and their sales process, right? It can definitely feel like we're throwing them a curveball. So what are the best ways to encourage buy-in for Cloud GTM and really excite sellers? So we'll start off with you, Chris, for this one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean, as we can all relate, sellers are always trying to optimize their time to be most effective to accomplish their most important goal, which is closing deals. Um, us as sales leaders, among many other things, it's our job to enable them to do that as efficiently and effectively as they can. Uh, what we've found at Full Story is that uh, you know cl a cloud GTM motion and leveraging cloud alliances can be really helpful in helping them close deals. Um, we've seen examples of cloud partners opening new doors, um, increasing existing deal sizes, acceler accelerating new deal cycles. Uh, saving at-risk renewals and even upselling existing customers. So across a variety of different deal types and, and situations, we've seen value um, in leveraging cloud partners. Uh, so really it's about educating the sellers on the potential, the opportunity that investing time to learn about the cloud GTM motion will bear fruit on the back end uh, and then showing them the examples of, of how it'll work. That's great. Yeah, show show the evidence. Show them show them show them the money. Show them how the deal size also grows. So, uh, Everett, uh, how do we excite the the sellers on the tackle team? I think really I can I can echo Chris. Right? Maybe we're a little different because cloud go to market is our lifeblood. It's it's kind of how we do everything, and it's what we're selling. Um, but when I kind of looked back at all the deals I've done at Tackle. Um, in kind of preparation for this, uh, you know, something that excites me is as a seller is the past of least resistance that doesn't cost me anything, right? So when I'm co-selling with a cloud provider um, on a deal, you know, establishing uh, legal and financial terms is often super simplified. Um, and the motion is becoming increasingly f uh, familiar to procurement teams, which accelerates my close. Like that's material to me as a seller, right? So the few deals that went outside of marketplace over my, you know, last almost two years, there's a bunch of extra work that I had to do. So I saw that material change. Um, and then, you know, the, the, the exciting part about co-selling is not only does collaborating with a cloud provider rep kind of support my current deal, it leads to more pipeline. So we want that reciprocity both at the organizational level, but at the personal level. So I know the motion when I'm when I'm co-selling and really leaning into cloud go to market, it, it's benefiting tackles co-sell metrics with our cloud providers, but just as exciting, I'm I'm empowered as you know a quota carrying AE to to uh, collaborate with my my counterpart rep, not only on that deal, but to follow on deals and kind of uh, support other accounts that we can target together. That's great. Thanks for sharing, y'all. Um, so we mentioned uh, 
seeing success with it, we'll move on to the really the anatomy of a win. So I'm really interested to hear what wins have looked like for your teams. So Everett, you can lead off first. Yeah, you know, um, I, I feel like I might touch on, uh, you know, a few uh, common characteristics today about about this flow. But um, I think all of my deals, you know, share some of the common characteristics that we see in, in a marketplace win. Um, you know, I was working on one this week, right, where the the processes that I might have to go through transacting directly with a new customer just to satisfy maybe the our two legal teams is so much different than if I'm going through marketplace and maybe we can leverage a standard contract that's familiar with everybody through AWS um, or just the contracting of how folks get paid, right, or and how they pay us. No PO, no invoice, the cloud provider handles that, the tackle platform handles that, of course. Um, and, and so when I'm when I'm educating a maybe a new uh, account on, on how to work with Tackle and how they're potentially going to work through the marketplace, I'm able to sort of highlight how these things make it all easier. And my co-sell counterpart provides additional intel as well. I think we've all had a moment in a sales cycle where everything was going right. And then for some reason, something stalled. And so I have several, you know, experiences over my last, you know, two years with Tackle where the ability to co-sell with someone from AWS or Microsoft or Google on a deal has helped accelerate deals that are going really well or provide, you know, kind of a, a helping hand when uh, deals needed to kind of get back on track. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's some common characteristics in every one of my deals kind of inhibits one of those. That's awesome. Chris, do uh, you have any success stories or wins you'd like to share? Yeah, um, I, got, I have a few. Uh, but in, in general, you know, Full Story is relatively early in our cloud GTM uh, life cycle. Um, the, first, the first deal we put through a cloud partner through Tackle was uh, in Q4 of last year. Mm -hmm. um, and, and since then, we we put, I think, a total of 25 additional deals worth 3 million uh, in ARR. Uh, so I've begun to ramp well. Uh, and this year we've got a nice healthy pipeline through uh, the cloud alliances. So excited about uh, the momentum we have and, and the potential for this year and then into 2024. Um, but there's been a few examples, you know, we mentioned all the different ways that uh, we've seen cloud partners impact deals in a positive way. And so I'll, I'll give you a few examples there. Um, we were working, our, our, one of our customers is a, a crypto exchange. Uh, and as we're all probably familiar, uh, last year there was a bit of a crypt, crypto winter. A lot of these crypto exchanges had to pull back on spending. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were looking across the board, how do we cut spend um, at all on all their software providers and, and vendors. And of course, full story what was on that list, not because of lack of value, but because they had to pull back. Um, we partnered with our counterparts at Google and were able to find out that actually at this exchange, there was unused commit dollars. So dollars that they had previously committed to pay through their cloud alliances um, or their cloud partner. Um, we were able to funnel those uh, unused commit dollars towards funding full story and continuing the renewal. So that was a great example of how we were able to find money that was already allocated mm -hmm. uh, to help fund a, a platform that they know they wanted to keep, but didn't think they could. Um, on the new business side, uh, we were working with uh, a large inter international airline. Um, and this was a, a great example of a, a true co-sell motion. So this was a new deal for our cloud partner and a new deal for Full Story, where we went in with the Better Together story and how Full Story's data can complement other data captured through the cloud partner. Um, uh, and we're able to close that deal. Uh, and so that was the first for us, the first for the cloud partner, and there's you know a lot of growth potential there um, as well. Uh, and then finally, uh, we were working with a uh, an existing customer that was a uh, a calendar and meeting booking platform. And this is a great upsell experience. Uh, they were a smaller account for us, um, and we were able to through partnering with our counterparts at uh, at the at the cloud um, at, at GCP. We were able to up level our conversations with the different contacts we were working with and ended up 4xing the size of that contract at renewal. So uh, a, a few flavors of value across yeah. the gamut 
um, but something that all uh, all sales teams and sales leaders could get excited about leveraging cloud. No, that's awesome to hear the, the, the all the different levels, whether it's a new renewal and upsell or yeah, just new business. So love to hear those stories, how you all overcame those challenges and, and had positive results. So uh, now let's talk habits. So I actually just finished reading a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. If you haven't had the chance to read it yet, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Uh, but one of the lines that stuck out to me was this one. With the same habits, you'll end up with the same results. But with better habits, anything is possible. If you can get 1% better each day for one year, you'll end up 37 times better by the time you're done. So let's apply that to the challenge at hand here. Uh, how do you make Cloud GTM a habit for your sales org? How do you get 1% better each day? Chris, would, would love for you to start on this one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great book, by the way. I was just looking up it's on my bookcase as well. Um, and, and one of the takeaways uh, that I would parlay off that is um, one of the best ways to create a habit is not to have more, not necessarily to have more discipline about it, but to make it easier. Mm -hmm. So how do we uh, make these habits an easier part of our normal flow so that it's easier to build them? Uh, and so with within full story, the way that we do that with our new newish cloud GTM motion um, uh, is we make it a part of the sales process and make it accessible and easy for the uh, the account reps to to see and touch. So, for example, we have in our Salesforce instances on account pages uh, the ability to see what partners exist uh, for a particular uh, prospect or customer account. And so right there as a part of going in there and managing opportunities and uh, and all other kinds of uh, Salesforce admin with accounts, they can see, hey, here's here's my uh, here are my partners that I can leverage for this particular account. Um, so that's an that's an example of building it into the flow, making it easy for the for the reps to to make it a habit within their within their process. That's great, Everett. What you got? That's a. Uh... That's exactly where I was going to go, Chris, right? We, we had all these bullet points prepared, but the number one I'm, thing I'm thinking about for a seller, especially a new seller who's trying to figure out how to lean into cloud go-to-market is like, make it easy for them. Don't introduce maybe a bunch of new work that maybe implies they're going to lose control of their cycle or somebody else is going to get involved that they don't know or when they don't, you know, maybe feel comfortable. Um, and I think we at TAC will do a good job of that. And it's obviously part of what we we position for the market. Um, I have the ability to within Salesforce um, with very minimal sort of clicking and typing and facilitating um, kind of activate the cloud go to market motion in a sales cycle, right? So I have my prospect scores that show me who's likely to procure, you know, via which marketplace. I've got my very simple click to co-sell button within Salesforce once my stage gets to a certain point. I don't have to go include a bunch of people, emails, slacks, text messages, you know, figuring out, you know, when and where to go. Um, and then obviously when it comes time to transact, we have that down packed here at Tackle. So it's, I think it's really important when you're, when you're getting started to understand that uh, sellers are territorial and they should be protective about their deals and their cycle and their pipeline. If you want them to tra transact and kind of um, lean into a new motion, make it as simple as an intuitive uh, as possible um, and let them kind of maintain control. I think that's a big, a big part of this too, right? You want to co-sell, you want to lean with the lean in with the cloud provider, but give your rep um, the opportunity to maintain their agency and control their their cycle as much as possible. But uh, yeah, make it easy. Yeah, one, one thing I'll add, add to that too is uh, you know, nothing creates uh, a habit with uh, sales reps as much as adding it to the comp plan. So that's another way to reinforce uh, whether it's spiffs as you're getting rolling on trying something new uh, to down the road, just making it a normal part of the uh, base comp plan and accelerator comp plan. Definitely. Great, great insights, y'all. So we've shared some success stories. We've shared how to build habits, but let's kind of combine those two topics. Uh, how have y'all seen these wins in your organization drive these behavior shifts and habits being built on your teams? Uh, Everett, you can lead off for this one. Yeah, you know, um, again, maybe maybe tackles a little unique because this is what we do day in and, and day out. Um, but what I think we we see sometimes is is maybe in combination with my alliances and kind of co-sell team 
we begin to understand maybe a new program that a cloud provider has offered or updated to kind of enrich, you know, maybe the incentives or the the comp that uh, a cloud provider might get to go through a marketplace. And so there's this, um, I sort of think about, you know, any skill, it's kind of like a muscle. It's like, you got to work it out to to build it up, but then you got to maintain it. And so there's this constant um, kind of observation, head on a swivel, understanding what makes this more attractive for folks as the space evolves. I mean, Microsoft's a good example, right? It's like last week, they just announced uh, a bunch of changes to the way that they co-sell, incentivize, and compensate folks. And so what we'll see is someone on, on our team leverages something new, right? And then other folks go, hey, how did you get that done? Sounds like it grew a deal or, it, you know, revived a a deal that that it may be gone stale or or um, you know expanded the uh, the opportunity size, and so I think sellers you know look at each other to to kind of constantly constantly be learning, understand kind of what tips and tricks we can steal, um, and so uh, you know a tackle it's 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 a muscle that we're constantly um, I think exercising you know with the cloud providers and with each other to understand you know how these incentives evolve and and how we can be more savvy. That's great. That's great. So Chris, uh, how about y'all? How do you, how do you, the wins you've seen really impact habits and, and behavior shifts? Yeah, I think um, one of the things I love about uh, working with cloud partners uh, and co-sell motions is that it's really a win for all the parties. So the, the customer finds a lot of value in using their, their commit dollars and transacting in an easier way for them. Cloud partners obviously are more sticky and have more revenue flowing through their platforms. Uh, ISVs like like uh, Full Story can benefit from closing you, you know more deals and upselling deals. Um, and then sales reps on on both sides, the uh, cloud partner and the ISV, benefit uh, from the comp plan and, and and closing more revenue. But I think um, what I've noticed is that when when uh, reps at Full Story see how smoothly the contracting process can go on the customer side that really changes their mindset because i'm sure everett can attest to this too at the enterprise level contracts are sometimes some of the most difficult elements to get through because mm -hmm. um, a lot of it's out of your hand if you're running it through a a process that is already predetermined predefined and pre-approved internally at a customer that you know can really accelerate it and so when reps see that that ease of of use and transaction, that will change their behavior to lean towards that more. That's great. Thanks for sharing, y'all. Um, so last topic here, uh, as the, the talking about the role of the partner team. So I know we have a handful of folks in partnerships and alliances attending today. So you know, we'd love to hear from you, Chris and Everett. How has your partner team contributed and enabled your your revenue teams? What's what's working well for y'all? So Chris, feel free to take this one first. Sure. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, help the revenue teams is what I would say. Do we were talking about habits? Do everything you can to make it easy for them to adopt this new motion. Um, uh, that includes things like education on how to execute uh, cloud partnership deals, the benefits of it, etc. Um, build it into the processes of the existing sales operation motions within your organization. And, and this is one where I think it's sometimes easy to overlook, uh, but as you get all that foundational work set up with the process and making it easy, after that's done, the, a great next step is to proactively build, bring opportunities to the table. So get smart about what you know about the cloud partners that uh, you're, you're bringing to the table and the account sets that the reps are going after and see if you can make connections proactively on their behalf to, uh, to to get the ball rolling with them. I think that's one element that is often overlooked and you'd be surprised how receptive sales teams would be if uh, when you bring things to the table for them to just start working and, and, and apply their sales motion to. Mm -hmm. Great points. Um, Everett, how, how does the partner team that tackle help, help y'all out? Yeah. Um... Two things come to mind, and and one is is kind of real time. Like a you know we have a cohort of of folks on our partner team out at AWS Summit in New York City this week and and today, right? And uh, I'm not there, but they're aware of a lot of the deals that we're working on, some of the challenges that we're facing, 
to get a text message from someone on your partner team when they're because they walked the floor and bumped into somebody that's you know uh, close to a deal that you're working on is super exciting. And so to Chris's point, it it feels like our alliances and and kind of co-sale team is uh, our partner team is on the front lines with us. Um, and it's again a little u- unique for us because every deal that I do is going to go through one of the marketplaces that they support. We've got someone that supports AWS, GCP, uh, and somebody on Azure. So my deals help them hit their numbers maybe a little bit more directly than in some other scenarios. So yeah. that feels really good, right? And I think cloud go to market um, shifts the paradigm a little bit for the value of partner teams. They're able to, I think more closely attach them themselves to to dollars and deals in these programs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, 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 I love that, you know, and I, it, it doesn't feel like maybe they're just asking me for time or asking me to do something else. They're helping me drive these deals because we both get compensated uh, for the same thing. Um, and then to just maybe build on that and kind of revisit what I just mentioned about Microsoft announcements last week, it's like, I didn't have time to be at that conference or listen to everything that was said there. So those people are banging down my door going, hey, these are the updates, right? This is how this impacts some of your deals and how some of our customers are going to sell. Um, so they're out head on a swivel understanding how our sort of way to facilitate with this cloud ecosystem evolves. It's a gift and a curse, right? The cloud providers listen to what the community says. They change their programs. It seems like every five minutes, hopefully to help everybody, but uh, your sellers aren't going to have time to, to focus on all of those updates. And so the partner team is kind of providing a little bit of a buffer. Hey, maybe you don't need to know everything, right? There was a week of announcements at Microsoft. Here's the five minute headline for mm-hmm. you to go run and be successful and, and understand how this is going to help you. So they're on the front lines with, with us and they're really helping us because we have that shared incentive. No, that's that's great. Aligning on goals is is a great way to really accelerate that that teamwork and collaboration, right? So all right, Joel, in the last couple of minutes we have, what's the final message you want the people to hear? Each of you can share some final words to wrap things up, just to summarize this topic. So Everett, you can jump in first and Chris, you can close this out. Yeah, you know, I I think um cloud go to market just represents a new way to win. Um, maybe an easier way to win, a smoother way to win for for everybody involved. Um, I think in this climate too, everyone is trying to do more with what they have, right? And so when you have the opportunity to to reach across the dance floor and grab the hand of someone at a cloud provider to say, hey, let's go make sure a deal closes, it's exciting, it's helpful, and you have no idea what's going to come from that. You know, I think we we measure maybe what our behavior could could turn into, but the personal relationships that are built when you co-sell with the cloud provider can really change your year, right? Um, and so I think the headline is cloud go to market allows you to, to do more with what you have um, and win more, win more often and win a little bit easier. Mm, love that. All right, Chris, you're up. Yeah, I, I'll uh, I'll wrap it up simply is that um, ton of value in cloud go to market. Uh, what I'll say is it's a marathon, not a sprint. So get started, um, start to build those relationships. It will pay dividends. It, you won't you, you won't close deals immediately, but they will close. And uh, and then when they do and that momentum picks up, it's going to be really great. So um, don't be afraid to, to, to try it out and, and, and check it out. Love it. Where's the wisdom right there, y'all? So um, yeah, you, you all may be wondering, attending, what's next? So I'm going to drop a few quick links in the chat if you'd like to learn more about how Tackle is helping out 550 plus ISVs uh, launch their cloud go-to-market strategy, and also another link to learn more about all the great things that Full Story is doing. So um, yeah, once again, huge thank you, Chris Everett, for joining us today, sharing more about your cloud GTM journey. Uh, and of course, thanks to all of you for uh, your excellent comments and contributions to today's event uh, attending. So uh, our next Cloud GTM Masterclass session is just two weeks from today. We're featuring the Director of Global Strategic Alliances at Wiz. He'll be sharing his revenue playbook and how Wiz skyrocketed from $1 million to $100 million in ARR in record-breaking time. So, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Hope you have a wonderful remainder of July, and we'll see you all next time. Bye.